Yo, this is Pastor Teeter here welcoming you to another episode of my revolutionary podcast where I'm here to help you find faith in Christ and how to follow through with your life. And today's deep dive is following a brand new series that we are doing called Bad Religion When Christianity Goes Wrong. And I kind of gave a little intro. I, I just personally thought especially speaking to a lot of our uh, church members and friends that are part of our church family. Uh, we thought this would be a great conversation to have post Easter. All right. Cause you know, this is a, a time when, you know, you, you've been, everybody's been either inviting people to church, right? They've been going to church. Maybe they've been listening to some online preachers or doing some things that they haven't done on a normal. And, uh, I thought it'd be great to look as we're talking about this new life that Jesus has given us, this new life that he has won for us on the cross. How about we spend the next month talking about how not to screw it up? All right. And that is really the vibe there. That's kind of like the move. And so this idea about bad religion, Christianity goes wrong. The, the big part of it is really hypocrisy, right? That's, that's how we can, it's like negative gains. You know, that's like you working out, you trying to do everything you need to do physical to get healthy, right? You spend four days, uh, let's say four days a week or even five days a week doing really good. But then you go crazy for those three days on the weekend, you know, it's going to cancel everything out. But hypocrisy is worse. It's not just kind of like doing one thing and then doing the other. Uh, that's part of it. But it's pretending, you know, that's really the, the 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 mode. And and what I my biggest burden, which talking about this whole thing was just making sure that, you know, I don't want to see I don't want to see you or I don't want to see anybody that's trying to follow Christ you know, again, I want you to know how to follow through, you know, and I want to help you to follow those and find those areas that are compromising, showing like, look, this is why, or this is it. And obviously hypocrisy is a major blind spot that we choose to have, you know, that, that it, that's an important one. And so we looked at the hypocrisy of really our own faith. And so we're going to be breaking this down hypocrisy in different ways over the next couple of weeks. But, uh, we chose the book of Amos, and we looked at how God was just sick and tired of the people's hypocrisy. You know, this is now the northern kingdom of Israel. Uh, so this was a unique scenario in that. Uh, so for some of you, if you never read the Bible, if you never read this part, uh, the nation, all right, Israel was one nation. And then there was a pretty much a civil war post King Solomon and the northern 10 tribes broke off and, rem and what remained was the Judah. All right. That tribe and some other trend, some other kind of remnants as well. And so there was now two nations. It was the kingdom of Judah in the south around Jerusalem and the kingdom of Israel. Now, what Israel did was they rebelled. Normally, their kings were way more wicked. I mean, by far than the kings of Judah. If you ever read, you know, first Saint Kings, Chronicles, all that stuff, the prophets, you'll see it. And what they did was that, man, they, they didn't just say, all right, look, we got a disagreement, so we kind of have to split up. You know, they were like, look, we don't even need you guys. We don't need Jerusalem. We don't need the temple. We'll build our own. And that was crazy because God had established, this is, you know, I'm trying to do something to teach you guys something for a reason. And they're like, nah, God, I don't think so. You know, I, I think we can kind of create our own replica. God, we think that we can, you know, do for ourselves what you say you can do. So that's what they did. They didn't go to the temple that God designated for, to be a place where the people would gather. They were like, no, we're going to gather on our own terms. And so that, that was like, number one, crazy. And so here, here they are not only worshiping God according to their terms, according to their standards, but they don't mean it. They're giving themselves to all of these other false gods of the land and of the nations, which God said not to do. And that's when, you know, Amos shows up from the, I believe he was from the, the Southern kingdom, from the kingdom of Judah, steps in to Israel and calls them out. And for years, that was kind of his, his little, uh, little short lived career there as a prophet. And one of the statements that really stood out to me the most as I was studying and prepping for that message was the one that we really harped on really, um, it was like a, a pseudo application, which was in uh, chapter four, verse 12, when he says, well, God says through Amos, prepare to meet your God. I'm like, that almost sounded like fighting words, right? Um, but they kind of were, you know, prepare to meet your God. And it's like, you think you know me, but you don't. You think you know me, but you don't. And he introduced himself in what I read in the verse as the God of armies. 
the God of armies. Now I was running out of time. And so I didn't have a chance to really kind of really dive a little deeper on that, but that's huge. I mean, the God of armies is kind of like the statement where we see in the Bible, where the God is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the God of armies is he's like, look, I'm the guy, like I am the, I'm not just a warrior God. He is the ultimate warrior God. There is no one that can step up. No one that can confront no one. I mean, he's it. He's the dude in charge, commander in chief. That's who he is. And he is coming against all of these nations for their wickedness and their rebellion. And he's like, Israel, you too, because God is a just God. God is a just God. And because he's a just God, he cannot let sin go unpunished. Now, because he's a gracious God, he gives time. He gives time for people to repent, time for people to turn, time for people to recognize. But like I kind of said I kind of said it in a prayer, um, again, in passing, sometimes listen, and I said this in a prayer, I've said this before because it tends to be a a prayer that people want and, and we preach on, right? Like breakthrough, right? Breakthrough into your next season, breakthrough into that next level, breakthrough, breakthrough. We all want breakthrough, but sometimes for us to experience breakthrough, God has to break through you. He has to break you because what is stopping the breakthrough sometimes is us. It's our attitudes. It's our sin. It's our it's our hard hearts that sometimes God has to break to put back together again. I know that's been look, that's been me like some of the biggest breakthroughs that I've experienced in my, in my life is because God broke through me. He sometimes he has to break through you right to get through to you. And that's what he does. And that's what he's pretty much telling Israel. Listen, I'm going to do this one way or another. And it ends with hope, which was cool. You know, you know, it's like one of those. I was telling my wife, I was like, I I don't I don't know why I've been on this kick lately of just like really motivating our church and me like, yo, let's let's get real with this. Let's get I mean, we think we real. And I'm not saying that we're not. But it was like, I mean, can we not step it up? Because I mean, the times are the times. Let's just let's let's own up. Let's explore. Let's see what else. What else is there? Right. To this. Not that we're, you know, missing out on God's not enough. But again, it's us. Like, are we settling for for so much less than what God wants for us? And and so obviously that hypocrisy is one of the things that can hold that back. And so that, that, that part of God as that warrior, you know, that, listen, he doesn't want to fight you, but sometimes, right. He ends up fighting us because really, we're the ones fighting him. We're the ones fighting him. We're, we're, we're trying to, we don't want to listen and we don't want to this and we don't want to that. And so because he fights for us, sometimes he has to fight us and he has to kind of get us to see and pin us down so we can like slow down and recognize and open our eyes. But at the same time, see, he doesn't force anything. He can't force that. He can't just open your eyes for you. Just, you know, he can't do that just to see, can you see now? See, when we, when he challenges us and he says, listen, meet, prepare to meet your God. What is he going to look like? Well, we see it in the picture of Jesus, right? Jesus, that ultimate warrior God who stood on the cross, he fought for us, fought for us. And one of major, the ultimate victory for us. And the thing is, guys, is that as God presenting himself as the God of armies, he's, he doesn't, he sees the reality. The people of Israel didn't. Sometimes we don't. When we are dealing with hypocrisy, We're living in a world of lies. This is what it is. We don't realize that we are losing a battle against darkness at that moment. So when God says, listen, I'm the God of armies, you need to let me in so I can fight this battle for you because you are losing this battle. You're losing this battle to the enemy. That's why I said that that bottom line was, listen, if you live a lie, you're going to die. If you live a lie, you're going to die. Live, live whatever lie that the enemy offers you, which whatever sin is, sin is just a lie. The the devil is a father of lies. Everything that guy spits is lies. And so if you live in the lies of the enemy, which is living contrary to the truth of God, you will die in your sins. Or again, you're going to, the, the joy of the Lord is going to die out. You know, the, the connection to the spirit is going to die out. I mean, the spirit doesn't die. Okay. But, but again, that that, that desire, you know, that, you know, you know, just your spirit, all those things, because it, it's cutting off. It's cutting off your circulation from God. It's cutting off. That's what sin does. It wants to cut you off. 
And as Christians, we got to be careful not to play these games and not to pretend that, all right, I'm just going to remix this sin and now it's going to be okay. Or, or like, you know, GK Chesterton said, sometimes hypocrisy is trying to fix a problem that fix a problem by pretending it doesn't exist. Sometimes as Christians, we know we kind of screw up. We know we mess up. But instead of owning up to that sin, we just kind of like pretend we didn't do it. And we just kind of keep moving forward and trying to still give God our offerings and still give God our this and still try to live that life. And what now, you know, what's wrong? What's going, you know, something's not right, of course, because you're pretending like that just didn't happen right there. You got to repent of that. Give it to God. Mature in the faith. That's what it's all about. You got to recognize those things when you realize, when you realize, all right, yeah, that this, this feeling, this emotion, this action, it's out of bounds. You recognize it. <clears throat> That's what you're called to do. And the fact that God is there fighting for us, he said, listen, I want to fight that battle. He's trying to fight us to kind of get out of the way. So man, he can take on the enemy for us because we can't. This was an analogy that I thought about using, but uh, I was like, nah, I don't think so. Because when I thought of the God as the God of armies, the ultimate warrior, I used to watch WWE and the ultimate warrior was one of my um, favorite wrestlers back in the day. And him and Hulk Hogan used to do a lot of tag teams and stuff like that. And those are some of my favorite guys. So I had an image. It was like, what if I use, I used the bag of chip analogy. You can, you guys check it out if you saw the sermon. Um, and I was like, you know, I just kind of saw it as the people of Israel is dying in their sins right? They're in that headlock that the enemy has on them. And it's a tag team match. And here God is reaching out saying, seek me and live like, yo, tag me in, call on my name and I'll step in and I'll clear the ring. I'll clear the ring of your enemies. I will do it. I will do it because he is the ultimate warriors. I had that image, right? Of, uh, and, and I mean, I don't think that's wrong. I, I just thought that, in, that analogy wasn't going to hit, but whatever, you'll get it now. But I, I feel like that's really what he was trying to say is like, you guys aren't going to make it again live that lie die but die to your lie recognize you've owned up die to the lie i'm like no no that is wrong no i'm not gonna go that way and you die to it by repenting by dying of denying yourself that's what christ used to say right he's what he told us to do and then we're gonna live and follow him that's an important one there and we kind of tag god in and god steps in the god of army steps in and then fights for us right he fights for us and helps us to fight off those things and one of the things that that we were talking about was uh like he'll he'll set us free from fatigue fatigue, right? Cause I, you know, I, I mentioned this in the sermon. I'm not going to double down on this, the fatigue of pretending, you know, like when you, if you sin and you reckon, let's say you're a Christian, you recognize, yeah, that's messed. I should, I should have done that. I hurt this person. I said this, I shouldn't have done that. And then you like, well, let me just God, my bad. And then you just pretend you, you, that that didn't happen. And you try to live your life. You, you, you put a burden on you. Um, that's why Christ says, you know, like, listen, no, lay down your offering. Jesus said, it was like, if you go to God and you have a situation and you have someone that you've wronged, leave your offering, go, you know, fix that, apologize, make it right. Then come back and offer, you know, offer your offering. Like how we treat one another matters. I mean, we see it in the book of Amos. And so that's a huge one there. When we pretend like we didn't wrong someone, when we pretend like we didn't do wrong and we should be asking for forgiveness, when we pretend it weighs down on us. But when we are open and honest with God, he will set us free from that fatigue because that is not a burden we're called to bear. And not only that, but I had a great conversation with um, uh, my boy Jonathan at the end of our service. We were talking about that sermon and and we, we had a really cool conversation about, again, how uh, I had mentioned that we we're just free. Like the way we live, we're free and how God, because he fights for us, we can learn to live free, learn, knowing that it, the battle belongs to him. And so we were having this real good conversation about the fact that just because we're free, doesn't mean that we're free to do whatever we want. That's what they, that's what the people of these guys thought, you know, Amos's crowd, they were free to do whatever they want. Hey, nothing's going wrong. We're getting our blessings. We're kind of doing it. So Okay. No, see, we're not free to do whatever we want. It's different. We are free, though, to pursue God without the fear of failure. That is huge to know that, you know, because I know I've struggled with this. I'm like, you know, I'm afraid of getting it wrong. I'm afraid of, you know, trying to pursue God to live for him and, and, and just kind of mess it up along the way. But no, see, that's what God that, that's what God won for us. The freedom of condemnation. Jesus himself said, read the rest of John three, not just three sixteen. read the rest of it, that he didn't come for us. He didn't show up and do what he did 
so that we would be condemned to point our fingers and like, listen, I told you, I told you not to do that. And now look what you made me. Now, now look what I got to do to fix this. No, Paul doubles down in Romans and he says, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus, none. And so that means that we are free knowing that even when we fall, even when we fail, we don't fall out of that relationship. We don't fall out of being a son and daughter of God when we have been regenerated. When you claim Christ as Savior, he has forgiven you of your sins. That is past, present and future. All of them. So when, when we for, when we repent of future sins, that's not asking God to wash our sins away because he's already done it. Repenting in future sins is how we mature in our faith. It's how we grow in our faith by coming into greater alignment and greater agreement with God. That's an important thing. And so what's so awesome is that we have here this freedom to pursue God without failing him. You know, it's we move forward and we trip and fall. We get lost. We take a left turn. But then there he is saying, I'm still here. Come this way. I love you. That's what we see here. The, the, this, this whole nation took a whole, you know, a left turn when God, God said, turn right. They turned left and they keep going. They kept going. And here's God saying, I still love you. I still want you back. I'm going to make things right. That's the God that we have. Now, not to free, now, you know. We're not just free to live whatever we want, but free to pursue him, free to pursue him without the fear of failure. That's just awesome. So I just wanted to challenge you guys. It's when it comes to hypocrisy, listen, we cannot be hypocritical of what the truth is. We cannot be hypocritical of sin in our life. Um, Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones, Dr. Martin Lloyd Jones, there's a lot of words there, said this. There are only two ways of dying in your sins or in Jesus Christ. You can die in your sins or you can die in Christ who died for your sins. That's, that's it. You got the only two options there. So that, that really, that quote really inspired me with that, that bottom line. It says, listen, if you live that lie, you just keep living that lie. You're going to die. But if you die to the lie, you're going to live. I mean, regardless of the fact you're going to die one way or another, but you can choose. That's the crazy part of your choose. How do you want to die? How do you want to die? Do you want to die in your sins or do you want to die in Christ? That's amazing. And so I want to challenge you guys with that, just as we're doubling down on that, again, thinking of reflecting on that message is that's the options. You know, God wants and desires us to continue to pursue him. Then we continue to grow in denying ourselves, dying to our sins, dying to ourselves as we die in Christ. But when we do that, we live. Now, let me just stop because I also saw something on Twitter this morning that was pretty cool. And um, see, when it comes to believers in Christ, this is where the this is where you kind of get that gut check. And again, that freedom from failure thing. Listen, the more you mature, the more you mature in your faith. OK, the more you mature in the faith, the more you, you are going to abhor any remaining sin in your life. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's going to you're, you're going to find yourself. You're going to find yourself wishing and wanting to do the complete opposite. You're going to find yourself justifying things that I want to do or justifying something that you just did. You're going to find this in, inner war and inner struggle within you. There is no person that can ever live a perfect life. Like there, there is nothing, even though we have the spirit in us, there's not from point A, from where I am here to point B, whenever I meet Jesus. There's no, there's never a point A and point B until that, that moment when I'm just have like an amazing streak where I can go days without sinning. No, because you and I can do things, you know, without even realizing and recognizing that that is a sin. Just because you didn't know you sinned doesn't mean you didn't do it. Got it. All right. There was one time I got pulled over because I didn't realize I was speeding. I didn't realize that the you know, the sign on the highway changed. It dropped 15. I was still going the normal you know, I thought I was obeying the law. I was going 75. I didn't realize I wasn't paying attention that now I just went into a place where it was a 60 and I got pulled over speeding. I, I legit I was like, I didn't know. I didn't know I was speeding just because I was ignorant of the fact that I was speeding doesn't mean that uh, I didn't get charged. Hey, I got that ticket. So listen, we sin all the time. yo. We do. And when any remaining sin in us, and the more you mature in Christ, the more you're going to abhor, the more you're going to hate that. That's what, you know, Christ said, you know, Amos, seek me and live and you'll learn to love evil. You'll learn to love good and not evil and hate evil because 
it's God. He gives us a new heart. He gives us his heart. He gives us his mind. And you just got to keep pursuing, keep meeting God, keep meeting him on a daily, keep meeting him. That's what we need to do. And one last application is that I actually didn't mention this and I was going to, and I forgot, but it's all right. I think this was a cool one just to be able to add it as a little uh, addendum to this was Amos. God made a call through Amos and saying, because the days are so evil, good people remained silent. Think of that. Good people remained silent because the days were evil. But Amos didn't. See, Jesus was the greater Amos in that Jesus was our burden bearer. Jesus was the great shepherd that went from his homeland to another land to present a message of hope and confrontation and love. That's what Jesus did, that Jesus was the greater Amos. And because we're supposed to model Jesus, right? We're supposed to do the same thing. And Amos gives us a great application for us as well. See, Amos did not remain silent when times were evil. He did not remain silent in the eyes of injustice, according to God's injustice. He did not remain silent according to unrighteousness, you know, comparing to God, God using God's definition of righteousness. Amos did not remain silent and neither should we. Neither should we. So for us, when we see whatever we're seeing in the world, you know, if we see injustice, if we see unrighteousness, according to God and according to godly standards, we are called to speak up, stand up and do something. Okay, Amos did. And look what happened. God used him. God, and Amos, by the way, remember, Amos was a nobody. He was a nobody. He was a poor shepherd slash farmer with two jobs. That was he. No one. He didn't have clout. He didn't have a name. He didn't have that. He just had God. He just had a message and a burden from God. Listen, you and I have a burden to bear. It's called the cross. We each are called to carry our own cross. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how many jobs you If you don't got a job, it doesn't matter if no one knows you. What matters is that we make God known. And the days are evil. They always are. Let's be real. They always are. And so we need to pursue Christ, seek him so that justice and righteousness can flow from inside out, because that's how it works from here out, justice and righteousness. So I challenge you, like I said, even yesterday in the sermon for, to let justice and righteousness flows means that some of you guys are going to have to, you know, the, the issues that you've been pretending, you got to own up to it. Go and ask for forgiveness to someone that you know you've wronged, but you've pretended like nothing ever happened. Some of you guys, you're going to need to go forgive somebody that hasn't even asked for forgiveness. You got to go, just go ahead and straight up forgive them. All right. And stop pretending like everything's okay. For some of you guys, if you're just pretending like everything is fine and, or like you just don't know how to handle or deal with that hurt or wound or question, stop pretending like it's not there. Meet God, bring it to him. Bring it to him and he'll help you. Bring it to him and he'll heal you. Bring it to him. He can open up your eyes and even just be in there and wrestle with you, with it, with you together. He is there. Let justice and righteousness flow in the way you love one another, in the way we speak the truth and love, the way we serve one another, especially those who don't love us back and who can't serve us back. Do that. That's what it's called, man. Love one another. That's, that's the biggest issue that God had with these people. The reason why he hated their services and hated everything that they were doing was because they were giving God, God they, they were giving God a fake version of themselves and they weren't loving one another. See, God doesn't want anything fake. He wants it real. He wants the real you, the real you, just as you are. He wants the real you. He, if you can show and just give yourself the real you, guess what? He'll give himself the real him to you. And that is what we really need. That sincere love, sincere and honest and open. God is honest and open with us. He just expects us and wants us to be the same. And when we open up to him like that, he does the rest.